If you have access to a macOS machine, it's relatively easy to use the Homebrew Package Manager to turn it into a network hacking computer. We'll show you how to install Shitrix, an SSH hacking program, on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. While macOS computers may not have a reputation for being good hacking computers, they can be easily weaponized with a package manager like Homebrew. Now, Homebrew is maintained by a small but dedicated group of volunteers, and there are a lot of Linux tools which are useful for hacking that are available for easy installation using only a couple commands. In order to install Homebrew, you only need to have Ruby installed. And once you install Homebrew, you have access to a lot of different Linux tools that you might be familiar with, including the Metasploit framework and tools like Shitrix. Now, Shitrix is a really cool and interesting tool that has a lot of default passwords and default usernames that are useful for attacking SSH devices on a network. This allows you to take your Mac OS computer and weaponize it into an SSH cracking machine on any network that you're a part of. Now again, in order to install this, you'll need to have Ruby installed on your Mac, but this comes installed by default, so generally this is a pretty easy thing to do. Once you have that installed and you have access to a Mac OS computer, we can begin. Homebrew, described as the missing package manager for Mac OS, can be found at brew.sh, and as you can see, the installation process is incredibly easy. We're just gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it into a terminal window. And this can take a little bit of time, so I'll do this first so you can see what happens while we talk about what this will actually do. Now, once you post, paste it in here, you can see the script will also install all these other things, so we can press return in order to install it. So while this installs, I can go through the homepage and show you a couple of the commands that are actually helpful with Homebrew. And in particular, installing various packages that you want to install that might be meant for maybe a Linux system are a excellent use of Homebrew, and one of the things that we'll be doing today. We're going to take a tool called Shitrix, S-S-H-T-R-I-X, which targets SSH uh, services running on various computers and attempts to brute force it over a network. Now, normally installing this on a macOS computer could be a little complicated, and there's a lot of different packages that take a lot of headache to get working on a macOS system. But rather than go through that, we can just use Homebrew to manage those packages for us, which means it'll also take care of all the dependencies and libraries needed in order to run the software we're trying to run. Now, it can be a total awful experience to have maybe one particular library not updated all the way or some other small problem that beginners get mired down in when they first try to do this. So this is a really good way of making sure that you don't need to get stuck doing all that uh, work when you're looking to just maybe install and try something new. So here we go, installation is successful. Homebrew is now installed and I can type brew help, I believe and it gives us a list of all of these different commands we can run. So there's another thing that we can do in order to make Homebrew a little bit better, and that is to create a personal access token on GitHub. So if we go to GitHub and go to uh, settings, tokens, and new, we can create a new personal ac access token and call it Homebrew. And this will allow us to bypass the rate limiting that GitHub sometimes does if we're installing a whole bunch of different tools. Now this is useful if you're looking to set up a computer and get around all the various rate limiting that GitHub might do while you're pulling down different libraries to install. So and make sure that you don't check any of the other boxes here because you don't need really uh, Homebrew to be doing anything into your account other than just being able to read and get access without rate limiting. Click on Generate Token, and we should be able to get this value. And what we'll need to do is we can copy from the tutorial, is actually add this line with your token here, uh, replaced by our specific token into a terminal window. Now there's two different places we'll need to put this. The first is going to be in bash uh, rc. So here we can just paste, and then we'll go back and paste in our token here. So let's grab this. 
and that's pasted. So now I can go ahead and press escape and colon WQ to right quit because I know how to exit Vim, not bragging. And then we can also go to the bash underscore profile and do the same. So again, we'll just copy this format, input mode, drop it here, and then we'll go ahead and add in our personal API key. Oops, there we go. And escape colon right quit. Great. Now we have everything put together, so we should be able to start looking for packages that we want to install with Homebrew. Now, there's a couple different websites that list these, and one of my favorites for finding interesting tools is the macappstore.org, and that's where we can find uh, SSH tricks, shit tricks, which we'll use to brute force a service that we find on this network. Now, as you can see, there's only three instructions required to install Shitrix, and we've already completed this one. So we'll just go ahead and copy this here and open a new terminal window in order to install it. Now we can just type brew install Shitrix, and we'll be able to install it onto our system. And of course it's already installed on mine, but if we want to reinstall it, I can do that as well, just so you see what it looks like, because it is really easy. So this is all poured directly from the most recent version of everything, meaning all the libraries and everything else are updated for you. And you don't need to run around worrying about what's not working or what hasn't been updated properly because Homebrew takes care of everything. So great, now we have Shitrix installed on the computer. So let me go ahead and expand this and we'll actually go ahead and use something and check to see if it's working properly. So first let's just type Shitrix and see that yes, in fact, it is here. And we can type tack H, capital H, in order to see a list of commands that we can use with Shitrix. Now, this can run a very long time because it does take a little bit to go over the network. And even though it uses four separate processes at the same time, I'm not gonna go ahead and run the whole default password list, which is included. And as you can see, you can use with the default switch tack D. Now, this is uh, 79 of the most common usernames and passwords and works great in particular for IoT devices. But today we're going to attack a device that I already know the username and password to, so we won't need to do that. Now, you can see some examples at the bottom and the command we're going to use is, oops, is going to be uh, Shitrix, attack H for the host. And we're going to use the IP address of the computer we wish to attack. Now we don't need to specify port 22 because we already uh, know that that's the default one, but we can always go in the script and change that if we want to, and the host is on a different port. Now, as you can see here, we found credentials, and we can see that it is root and tor, meaning someone has not changed the default login and password on this computer. Now, just like that, we were able to go from having pretty not much no hacking software at all on this computer to having a powerful and effective brute forcing mechanism for going after SSH connections, making this probably one of the fastest ways you can get your computer ready to hack on macOS. While some people in the hacker community put a lot of weight and importance on the operating system you're using, macOS can be equally as effective as Kali Linux depending on what you're trying to do and the package manager you're using. Homebrew is a great way to try out various Linux tools on any macOS computer you might have access to. But I should point out that you shouldn't go attacking any computer that you don't have permission to because especially Shitrix has the tendency of breaking into these systems quite easily. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or feedback on the show, send me a message on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.